Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here. I don't know about you, but I love art. And one of my favourite artistic movements has to be the Impressionist movement, which is characterised by small, but visible brushstrokes. And out of the entire movement, and art in general, my favourite artist has to be Van Gogh. So one day, I asked myself, has he and other Impressionists had any influence on the video game industry? And if so, how much of an influence? Well, surprisingly, Impressionism has, in fact, left quite an impression on the games industry, with many video games sharing similar art styles to famous Impressionist works, such as the game Proteus, which appears to mimic the art style of Claude Monet, one of the most famous Impressionist painters of all time, and Braid, which seems to have a pseudo-Impressionist art style. First, let's talk a little about Monet. Claude Monet was a founder of French Impressionism, and has produced some of the most recognisable paintings. The term Impressionism is actually derived from the title of one of his paintings, named Impression Soleil Levant, or Impression Sunrise in English. Many of his paintings show small visible brushstrokes and mix colours seamlessly into each other to great effect. He would often repaint paintings at different times of day, to observe the effects that light would have on the landscape. One could also argue that 8 and 16-bit games all take a little from the Impressionist movement, as paintings from the movement were only meant to give an impression of the scene painted, much like how older games left some details out of the graphics for the player to fill in themselves. For example, the sprite of Mario in Super Mario Bros. Is that a mouth? Or a moustache? Now that I've said a little about Monet, I want to talk about my favourite artist, Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh is probably one of the most popular and recognisable painters today, but surprisingly, and sadly, he only ever sold one painting in his lifetime. During his life, he was also regarded as a failed artist, and he himself would harshly criticise his own work. Van Gogh also suffered from bipolar disorder, which probably didn't help his situation. Van Gogh also used small but visible brushstrokes in his work, and he also used a painting method called impasto, where paint was laid onto the canvas thickly, which makes brushstrokes more visible, as well as give the painting a three-dimensional effect, and makes the painting stick out of the frame. I want to talk about one specific painting of his, A Starry Night, probably one of his most important and famous works, which is known as one of the most recognisable paintings on the planet. It also happens to be my favourite painting. This painting, along with Van Gogh's work as a whole, has had quite the influence on the games industry, more specifically at Nintendo, where several games have referenced the artist and Starry Night. One example of this would be the Yoshi's Island series of games. The original game has an art style which appears to mimic Impressionism in a number of ways, including one of its defining characteristics, visible brushstrokes. Impressionists also focused mainly on landscapes, which also explains how the backgrounds in the game look very similar to Impressionist works. One level in particular though, level 6-7, has a background that takes inspiration directly from Starry Night. You've got everything here, the moon, the stars, all in the same style as the original painting. The newer Yoshi's Island games also have a very similar art style, which harkens back to the Impressionist movement as a whole. References to Van Gogh aren't just limited to this series though. Several of the paintings seen in Luigi's Mansion also seem to be painted in the Impressionist style as well. The most obvious reference to A Starry Night, however, has to be from the level Soda Jungle 4 in New Super Mario Bros. U, named Painted Swampland. The entire level looks like it has been painted by Van Gogh himself, with the moon from A Starry Night up in the corner, as well as there being iconic cypress trees visible in the background that he often included in his works. The level clearly shows off the swirly style he developed later in his life, while he was living in an asylum at saint rame de provence This level perfectly captures the mysterious nature of the painting, and also, like the original painting, takes a more abstract approach to landscapes, as many of Van Gogh's earlier works were more naturalistic. Oddly enough, Starry Night was regarded as a failure by Van Gogh, and in a letter to another painter, named Emile Bernard, Van Gogh talked about the upper portion of the painting. I once or twice allowed myself to be led astray into abstraction, as you know, but that was delusion, dear friend, and one soon comes up against a brick wall. And yet, once again I allowed myself to be led astray into reaching for stars that are too big. Another failure, and I have had my fill of that. Unfortunately, Van Gogh never got to see how popular his paintings would be. He died 13 months after he painted A Starry Night, on the 27th of July, 1890, at only 37. He shot himself in the chest with a revolver, and died 30 hours later from his injuries. If only Van Gogh was able to see the legacy that he left behind. Throughout his whole life, people told him that his work was terrible, and he eventually started saying that to himself too. Yet he still had the courage to keep painting. To finish, I'd like to read this quote from the Doctor Who episode, Vincent and the Doctor, as I feel that it sums up my feelings about Van Gogh pretty well. To me, 
Van Gogh is the finest painter of them all, certainly the most popular, great painter of all time, the most beloved, his command of colour, most magnificent. He transformed the pain of his tormented life into ecstatic beauty. Pain is easy to portray, but to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy and joy and magnificence of our world, no one had ever done it before. Perhaps no one ever will again. To my mind, that strange, wild man who roamed the fields of Provence was not only the world's greatest artist, but also one of the greatest men who ever lived. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more Culture Bits videos. I also want to ask you a question. What's your favourite painting? Is it a Van Gogh, or is it from another artist? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time!